Okay, in this lesson we're going to do the secant and the cosecant. So um, I have got the decimal chart up here again and you might notice that I've got the cosine graph up here because the cosine and secant graphs and functions are reciprocals of each other. So you might want to take a look at the column for the cosine and this decimal column for the secant and notice how they do have a reciprocal relationship. Um, especially noting that where the cosine is zero, the secant is undefined, and um, as the cosine uh, function gets larger and larger, the secant function um, gets smaller. So, th because it's a reciprocal relationship. So when we think of the secant, we always think of the cosine graph too. In fact, when we do some translations and graph this, we are going to think of this cosine, that's a cosine right there, we're going to think of that as our parent function, or sometimes we can call it a guide function because it will help us. So parent or guide function. So let's first uh, understand our asymptotes. Well, they occur where the function is undefined. So in the secant, the function is undefined at negative pi over 2. and positive pi over 2. And basically, uh, it's undefined wherever the cosine is 0. I'll squeeze that one right over there. So if you, if you know where the cosine is 0, then you automatically know where your secant has uh, asymptotes. Um, and then, the other thing to do is, to, um, oh, let me get rid of this. We don't have any x intercepts here, um, but they do go with the, <coughs> pardon me, they do go with the asymptotes. So the next thing to look at is where the two functions are equal. Well, the two functions are equal at 0. Here's my cosine, and here's my so at 0, the two functions are equal, and they're also equal on this chart. I've got it at negative pi. They're equal. And on this chart, I show it as positive pi. They're also equal. Okay. So that's where they are equal to each other. And then um, realizing they have this reciprocal relationship, so let me pick a different color to graph. So as the cosine, okay, let's start. Let, let's start right here. As the cosine goes um, here at x equals zero, as it decreases from one to zero, what's happening to the secant is it is increasing. Okay. And those two branches there kind of look like a mirror image. Likewise. Uh, in quadrant 4, when the cosine is decreasing from 1 to 0, because it's a reciprocal relationship, the secant is increasing. So basically, if you know where they're equal, you can just draw in the secant function. And labeling is really important because there are two functions here. So you would write f of x equals the secant of x, and then of course you would indicate which function it was, and then you might also write um, g of x equals cosine of x, and of course indicate what that function is. So you can use, see how you use your cosine function here as a guide function for your um, for your secant. Alright, so now let's look at the uh, cosecant and likewise that's, that's just um, the same, almost the same thing. So its guide function is 
the sign and I forgot what color we picked. So everywhere the sign is zero, you can look at the chart to verify this, you will have an asymptote. And by the way, when I draw an asymptote on the y-axis, I always just draw it like just slightly to the left so I can see it. Because if you draw it right on top of the y-axis, it's just really hard to see it. And then there's another asymptote right there. And then recall that they are equal at where, the, where they are uh, pi over 2, negative pi over 2, where the sign is 1 or negative 1. Um, also, by the way, maximums and minimums, they're equal. And then there's our cosecant. And obviously, it looks exactly like the other one, the secant, but it's been phase shifted. And, of course, the sine looks like the cosine, but it's been phase shifted. So, again, you would, you would write this in, okay, the cosecant of x, and then indicate which graph that is. And then your guide function, well, that one's this one right here. And you'll find that's important when we do translations. I'll show you how to do that. So what's the period? We didn't talk about that. We'll talk about it right now. The period of the cosecant is 2 pi. Uh, the period of the secant is 2 pi. So for every 2 pi, I have a whole cycle. So I could have a cycle. See, a cycle is going to be one of the up ones and one of the down ones. So I've got a cycle from negative pi to pi. There's a whole cycle or a period. See how I get one of the down graphs and I get one of the up graphs? Um, you also know that you could have a cycle or a period from 0 to 2 pi. I'm not really showing 2 pi here. Okay. But if I did, I would get an up cycle and a down cycle there too. Alright, so that's the graphing of the secant and the cosecant.